Once again, we have another Senna rerun, and the big question is, should you get him? In my opinion, it's a lot easier to recommend Senna these days, but here with Senna and Masanori. Here's the thing. Since his last rerun, a couple of things have happened with a couple of releases that have actually benefited him quite a lot. We are mainly talking about Farina and Baiju's release. Baiju, of course, is a particularly good alternative to Nahida for a lot of Seno's teams, namely Quick Bloom. And then, of course, Farina is a particularly good alternative to someone like Xingqiu and Yalan if you want to play uh, Quick Bloom teams. And notably as well, Xingqiu has way too much Hydro app for a Quick Bloom team. It does end up turning it into a Hydro team instead. And on top of that, in 4.0, we had a new set of weapons for the Battle Pass. And one of those weapons is called the Ballad of the Fjords. Ballad of the Fjords is particularly good for Seno's most popular team being Quick Blue, because in that team, you usually have at least three different elements in the form of Electro, Hydro, and Dendro. And as a direct result of that, you get a bunch of free EM. And if you decide to R5 that thing, then you have 240 free EM. On top of that, it's a crit rate substat uh, so that's really, really good as well. You can also use this weapon on Hu Tao if you are worried about getting weapons that are only usable on one character and you don't end up playing that character for quite some time. So yeah, he's a lot easier to recommend because not only is he still pretty damn fun to play, uh, but on top of that, he now has quite a lot of options that he can play around with. So with a Quick Bloom team, with Seno, Baiju, in my case, Beidou and Farina, Basically, the way everything checks out is kind of like this. Alright, we'll just wait for Masanori to do that. We'll do that. Your sins weigh upon your soul! Yeah. Oh good, we got... If vulnerability mode Masanori, we can just absolutely go to town. It doesn't really matter at that point. Ah! Okay, a little bit of lag came in there. I was trying to do some fancy hold E timings with Beidou's skill, but alas, it didn't actually go through. The idea is that with a team like this, we're not using Yelan, we're not using Baiju, but we're actually still doing really, really well. And we're also just pumping out the damage with both Seno, Beidou, and also Farina. So yeah, it's a really, really nice team. And this is a team where you can replace uh, Beidou with, let's say, Fischl, or potentially you might want to go double Denjo and bring in Nahida as well, instead of just going for Baiju. But of course, what's really, really cool about Baiju's release, as I mentioned in the Baiju rerun, is that he is actually enough Dendro for Quick Bloom at the very least. So yeah, that's actually really, really good. Now, I also wanted to sort of take this opportunity to talk about Farina's effect on Quick Bloom in particular, because Quick Bloom is a team where you will end up having quite a lot of DPSs on the team, namely your Electro DPS, in this case Seno, but also Miko or Lisa. And then also you might have some Dendro DPSs, especially if you decide to go double Dendro, or if you want to bring Nahida and then potentially an Electro healer like Shinobu or Dori, then absolutely you have another DPS in the form of Nahida. And so having Farina on the team, like I mentioned in the Quick Bloom Dory video, uh, is really, really good at just buffing the entire team as opposed to someone like Yelan. So Farina's existence is in fact a buff to Senno's teams. Now I realize I just talked a lot about just general Quick Bloom shenanigans, so we're going to stop there now. We're going to go back to the main topic at hand, which is should you get Senno? And we're going to talk about how you actually build him. So. In order to build Seno, first off, you should definitely get him to level 90. This is one of the things that I kind of made the mistake on with both Seno, Alhatham, and Thinglady, in that I actually didn't level 90 them for quite some time, and that really contributed to me thinking, damn, they're not actually all that good. But definitely, level 90, huge thing. Huge thing. Cannot stress that enough. Now, when it comes to building Seno, let's first talk about his talents. There's really no reason to level up his normal attack talent, so you don't need to do that. That being said, I would probably say bringing his normal attack talents to at least level 6 is still fine, because you may end up using his normal attack talents from time to time, especially if you're playing like Yelan, for example, and you have a little bit of downtime for some reason, then 
chucking out his normal attacks, mm, at least they'll do a little bit of damage, not no damage, you know? So that's still something. And also, if you decide to play Seno in co-op missions, then you're going to have downtime where you're going to be forced to either do nothing or you use his normal attacks. When it comes to Seno's weapons, I'm going off entirely of vibes because there's actually no KQM rankings at all, so I don't really have anything to base off. Also, I don't have all of these weapons, but based entirely on vibes, essentially, Staff of Scarlet Sides is his best in slot. No real doubt about that, but I would probably say his second best weapon is actually Ballad of the Fjord. I'm not entirely sure if Ballad of the Fjord is stronger than Jade Spear, Maybe someone in the comments can let me know how they feel about that. But Ballad of the Fjords, just by reading the effect of it, being that it's a lot of extra EM, I think that should be a smidge better than Jade Spear. Maybe not. I don't know. Otherwise, Jade Spear is probably stronger than Deathmatch, which would then be stronger than probably the easiest weapon that you can get for uh, someone like Seto, which is, of course, Contain Cross Spear. That's kind of why I don't really care about any other spears in the game, because Katane Cross Spear is a completely free-to-play, craftable weapon. If you're not using Katane Cross Spear on Senno, you can still build that weapon, you can use it on like your Nilu driver Candice, which is what I do. As far as I can tell, Senno probably prefers weapons that can give him some EM, although Staff of Scarlet Sands is more of an EM into attack transfer, so... I'm not entirely sure about that myself, but either way, uh, I, th I feel like Ballad of the Fjords is really, really good for him. Feeling like it. Now, when it comes to artifacts, is Thundering Fury, that's pretty much the only artifact set that I'll ever use on Seno. Because of the cooldown reduction paired with the extra damage that you get with your Hyper Blooms and your Aggravates, to me, Thundering Fury is pretty much a no-brainer. Otherwise, you could play Mara Chasse these days if you want. Uh, just don't overcap the crit rate, and I say that as someone who's using Ballad of the Fjords. Scarf of Scar Scarlet Sands is also a crit rate weapon. Deathmatch is also, well, Deathmatch and Jade Spear, the, all the weapons except for Contain Cross Spear that I mentioned before, they're all crit rate weapons, so just keep that in mind when you're using something like Mara Chasse. Don't overcap your crit rate. Otherwise, there's Gilded Dreams. It's also a strong set on Seto. I personally find Gilded Dreams on Seto to just be too boring compared to Thundering Fury. So, yeah, I don't really recommend it myself, but that's only because it's a little bit boring. Trial Senos, I believe, usually are on Gilded Dreams. So you could at least sort of have a feel about how he plays with Gilded Dreams, but I'll tell you right now, compared to Thundering Fury, Gilded Dreams is just not particularly exciting in my opinion. In terms of the artifact substats, I feel like it's just EM Electro Crit, that's basically it. Some people might go for an attack sand, I suppose if you do some testing on someone like Masanori, you might see some slightly bigger numbers with your attack sands, depending on the substats of your attack sands compared to your EM sands, but in general, I just stick to EM Electro Crit. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as well is when it comes to Seno, his ult actually gives him 100 free EM. Uh, so. When you think your build has quite a decent amount of EM, there's going to be a hundred more as soon as you pop your ult, so that's really, really good. And then on top of that, you also have other external factors like Double Dendro, the Dendro Resonance, so there's another 100 coming in there. If you're playing Nahida or Sucrose, there's another however much coming from that as well. So when we have a team like this with Nahida, my Seto starts off with 415 EM. So that's a lot of EM. But if I go through the whole rigmarole, even though Farina and Baiju are not going to give Seno extra EM, the Dendro Resonance will. And now I have 762 EM. <laughs> and that EM is all turning into base damage multiplier buffs for his normal attacks as part of his ult, as well as the Dust Stalker bolt. So dust stalker dust strike there's, there's a special skills that you get at the intervals which are shorter intervals if you're playing tf so that's a lot of extra damage and that's really really nice now let's quickly talk about seto's constellations because i also kind of suspect that we might be seeing candace on the seno banner hopefully maybe no anyway when it comes to Seno's constellations, none of his constellations matter. 
I have in these demonstrations and in this entire video a C0 uh, Seto. And he's pretty good. So you don't really need his consolations. That being said, on the off chance that Candace does show up on his banner, well, I'm going to have to actually start talking about his constellations. So, C1 is probably his better constellation because it's attack speed. And attack speed, in my opinion, is always really fun to play around with. So, when you use your burst, when you have C1, you get faster attack speed. Can't say no to that. <laughs> uh, it should also make things feel nicer and it might also help with your TF shenanigans as well. So, yeah, C1 is actually... I'd say pretty decent. Uh, C2 is 50% electro damage bonus for him, I believe. So that's a pretty big di damage bonus and it's really, really good for aggravates in particular because aggravates love extra damage bonus. Now, you don't need them and you don't need these other two as well, but while we're at it, C4, you basically turn him into a better battery for someone like Beidol, for example. Or if you want to play Seno with Lisa, then Seno becomes a better battery for Lisa as well. So that's, of course, going to be really, really good. And C6, you get some automatic special ease whenever you do your normal attacks under your ult. You get eight of them. <laughs> More damage. Great. Awesome. Cool beads. That one is just a whole lot of whatever, in my opinion. So, yeah, Seno hasn't exactly changed in some dramatic way, shape, or form, but he has been a lot easier to build around because of the fact that we have some more meaningful options in the form of Baiju, Farina, Ballad of the Fjords, hell, even Marashose, if you're playing him with Farina. Could be an interesting choice as well. Uh, he is, of course, going to be an on-fielder, which obviously makes it a lot more difficult to recommend on-fielders as opposed to supporting off-fielders like Farina, Yelan, etc., 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 or Miko, for example. So that's why I do end up saying, yeah, if you're going to play an Electro carry like Seno, like Miko, it would be easier to recommend Miko. But Seno is still really, really good. Um, that being said, though, if you're not looking for like a main on field or DPS, Seto is not for you. But he is still pretty fun and real smooth to play. There are two on field five star academia boys in the game in the form of Seno and Al Haytham. And I know a lot of people prefer Al Haytham over Seno because Al Haytham does tend to be stronger than Seno. I do actually enjoy playing Seno at least substantively more than Al Haytham. So take that for what you will. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, we're going to talk about some hidden coding that has actually existed in the game uh, with regards to Seno. And it's really interesting that this kind of thing exists because I feel like it's just Hoyoverse just rewarding people for sh sharing their data. Let's just go with that because it turns out that Hoyo has actually coded this game to secretly listen to your microphone while you're playing the game. I know. It sounds very CCP creepy, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So here's the thing. For Seno players in particular, this is actually working sort of slightly into their advantage because it turns out that there is actually this hidden mechanic in the game where if you, and I mean you the player, and Seno say the same phrase simultaneously when you use his burst, uh, Seno gets a small buff. It's a hidden buff. You're not going to be able to see it in the numbers, but it exists. So. If you both say, your sins weigh upon your soul, your Seno gets a 4.1403471% damage bonus. So that's of course going to be really, really good. Like I said previously, Agraphase love damage bonus. So that's going to be really, really useful. And if you and Seno both say, through me, justice is served, then your Seno gets 23 EM. So that's actually kind of nice because that also converts into some additional base damage multiplier. Not a huge amount, but it's still going to apply some base damage multiplier increases to his kit. So that's going to be really, really good. If you and your Seno say, Judgment is upon you! Then your Seno gets a 5.202905% attack bonus. Now, attack isn't as super duper meaningful on Seno compared to EM, but it's still useful because Seno's uh, attacks do end up scaling off attack as well. So that's of course going to be really good. I don't know why the numbers are so randomly, weirdly uneven, but 
that's what Hoyo did, so that's what we get. Uh, remember, it's all hidden in the UI, so your numbers are still going to remain the same, but the enemy health bars are going to be ticking down just a little bit faster based on which bonus you get, so just keep that in mind for anyone who's actually made it this far into the video, but just make sure that both you and Seno say the same thing simultaneously, so just keep that in mind. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. How do you feel about Seno? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure he's a lot of fun for people who are Seno mains. And I feel like Seno mains have started to get a little bit more louder and prouder about being Seno mains because he has been sort of trash talked a little bit. In my opinion, I think he's a little bit underrated by some people in the community. Often he is cited as someone who people regret getting. Uh, but as soon as I got him to level 90, I stopped regretting getting him. I've been liking him a lot. So yeah, I would recommend Seno. If you don't have him. If you already have him, don't spend on his banner. But that's going to be it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Genshin Impact action. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. First, a bit. Nowhere to run. Judgment is upon you. And it's a do.